Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. And then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, <coughs> and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around, looked at his disciples, rebuked Peter, and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. Last week, on Tuesday, in the evening, around 7.45, I went and joined the Two Hearts. This is a group that meets every Tuesday evening in the Aquin Center to pray together. They say the rosary, and then after that, they have reflection on the readings of the Sunday that is coming up the three readings, and I joined them. And we went through these readings. And of course, after the readings, there is that sharing of reflections by whoever is there. And I remember, when we went through the gospel, after reading this last part of the gospel, one of the lady told me, say, oh, Father, this is a hard one to take. And this is what it says. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. And this is truly a hard one to take. <clears throat> and this is where I would like to draw your attention for our reflections this morning. Jesus is stating this clearly in order to tell his disciples and demand from them what it means to be a true disciple. And that is the demand he puts before them. To renounce yourself, to take up your cross, and to follow him. Renouncing yourself, meaning to stop thinking about yourself and making yourself the center of everything. If we want to follow Christ, we must reject that selfishness and not assess our options in the light of our own self-interest or self-centeredness, but be others-oriented 
and Christ oriented. And this is what he asked of his disciples and us as well. And the second injunction that is, take up your cross. To take up your cross does not mean putting up with all our problems and with the patience, but kind of rather to seek love in the cross. A Christian is the one who seeks that love and not pain in the cross. The cross is a sign of love and self-giving. To carry one's cross means to join Christ as he gives the greatest proof of his love for us and identifying with him in the very cross. And the last part being, follow me, as he says. And this does not mean following me in the language of Christ as a model, but rather to choose just as he has chosen. It means to take part in his plan, as he said, to take part in my plan, to love your life for, to live your life rather, for that love of others and for Christ himself, to identify with him in all this act. And that is the demand that he puts forward. Whoever wishes to come after me has to deny himself, has to take up this cross and follow me. And he concludes by saying, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. And for those who have been attending mass this, this morning masses, they know all the gospel readings kind of this week has been geared towards this tough demand like someone on the mountain a few days ago when he preached and said, blessed are the poor for they shall be happy. Blessed are the hungry for they will be happy. Blessed are those who grieve. Who wants to identify with all this? But Jesus comforts us and say, for the sake of the gospel. Say, Blessed are you when they hate you. Because of my name, your reward will be great in heaven. And likewise, taking up this cross and following him is for the sake of this gospel. And it is by this that the disciples will prove their true discipleship. And it is for the sake of this that we too become true disciples of Jesus because we commit ourselves to him and identify with him in this journey of the cross and following him. It is by carrying his cross and dying on it that Jesus kind of demonstrated this love and generosity for us. And he asks us to do the same. Jesus wants us to do the same and to renounce one sin, to take up one's cross and to follow him. St. James in the second reading uses another language for it and he, say, and he challenges us on it as well when he asks us to be practical with our faith. Practical Christianity, he says, means faith in our action. And it is by this renouncing oneself, it is by this taking of one's cross and following him, following Jesus, that we too can demonstrate our faith. Faith that comes with good work. Otherwise, he says, without good work, it is dead. It is no longer faith. By this faith in our action, we as well accept to carry our cross humbly and with patience, while at the same time relying on God's grace. So it is by this action again that helps us
to express and accept Jesus as the promised Messiah, as Prophet Isaiah speaks of in the first reading. It is by this cross, following him and announcing oneself, oneself in the actions that we can also demonstrate our faith, that can become actions of our faith, as St. James calls us to in this second reading. So Jesus calls us to be true disciples by these three demands that he makes of you and me. Let us pray for his grace, the grace of God that will continue to help us to identify with him in all our actions so that we may be his true disciples and live by this discipleship. This we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.